you need exposure to get your business out there. And the key to sales, I tell you this all the time, mm -hmm. the key to sales is getting in front of enough people. He was like, okay, put together a presentation. So I go home, I'm geeked, I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what to put in this presentation. <laughs> I'm talking to people, I'm like, I don't want to. I put oh, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> You don't even have to have started your podcast to get sponsorships for your podcast. Mm. There are so many different ways to monetize. What's up, CEOs? It's Nicholas Marquis, your favorite business coach, and I am here with the amazing Naya B Marketing, Naya People. Naya, why don't you introduce yourself and tell the folks about you? Yeah, so I'm, I go by Naya B, and um, I own a marketing and production company. So we solely focus on podcast production and promotion. And you already know, this is my coach. Yes, yes, yes. So we out here winning in this mini street. So just saying, I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Yeah, Naya is the queen of podcasting. So if you are interested in starting a podcast, you definitely want to tune in. But, you know, I'm always hungry when it comes to these. So today we are eating from Peach Cobble Cafe here in Atlanta, Georgia. What did you get? So I have mashed potatoes, candy yams, and fried salmon. Mm. And I have... Uh, chicken wings, macaroni and cheese, and collard greens. And then I also wanted to, I love turkey wings, so I want to try the turkey wing. I got the brown gravy. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. It looks and smells good. It does. Yes. And some cornbread. They, they definitely packed some, some cornbread. cornbread yeah. Can't go wrong with some cornbread. Peach Cobber Cafe watches this. So, Peach Cobber Cafe, if you're watching this, I'm going to give you a lot, a, a real review. Honest review. <laughs> yeah. Don't let us, we can't lie to them. <laughs> right. You like it? Mm-hmm. So far, so good. So, y'all, <laughs> it was trying getting here. <laughs> See the face? <laughs> the side <laughs> eyes. <laughs> so, I made a big deal about now. I'm like, what time we want to do this? And we were going back and forth on the time. Mm -hmm. Then, we were trying to, I was trying to order on DoorDash. Mm -hmm because I'm also, you know, up here working. We went to, I'm not gonna call out the restaurants. Y'all need to get y'all stuff together on DoorDash, black owned restaurant businesses. But um, the first restaurant we went to, it they changed the time and they were closed. We couldn't place the order. The second restaurant we went to, they said they were closed. So then Peach Cobra Cafe came up, we ordered there, but then the other restaurants opened up and turned their DoorDash back on. Try it. Um, <laughs> I know you was like, I was like, he is so annoyed with me. He was like, mm -mm. He was like 11 o'clock now, you're like, mm. good. The green. Are they? Mm-hmm. You want to taste? Yes. We share over here. Okay, so then, now you text me, she's like, text me the address again. Ain't it good? Yes, it we is. Have and it's super well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, like, I'm, I'm I sent Naya the, <laughs> I sent Naya the address, and in my mind, I'm like, you know what? Does it have a northwest, northeast? I couldn't think, right? And um, so I just sent her my location. She went to the first address, which took her took her to the other side of West Peachtree Street. My office is on. Um, well, I'm not gonna tell the address, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, we doing that, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So Naya, what what happened? You took me across town. Yeah, these are good. If you wanna mm -hmm. the yams, busting. It took me on the other side of nowhere. Like, I was like, maybe he's in a new spot. Like, maybe he wants to record in a new place. I don't understand. So I called you and you hadn't answered. So I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I hope this is the right address. So I just clicked the your location, the little map mm -hmm. that popped up. And I was like, let me just 20 minutes cross away. my finger. It's 20. It was like 29 minutes. Between oh, shoot. I told y'all. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, we can't. 29 you minutes. You told me the food was here? Hey. Listen, when the food get here, magic happens. Mm-hmm. Peach Copper Cafe, this is good. Very. A friend of mine told me that they didn't care for it, so I was a little nervous, but this is good. Y'all should definitely try it. Yep, facts. The cornbread really tastes cakey. Yeah. Like, I was not expecting that. So, Naya, how did you get started in the podcast world? Man. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Got to. They understand it's a mukbang. 
Entree you talk. know, <laughs> look, I actually started in the podcast realm um, officially in 2017. I had already been thinking about starting a podcast. The Breakfast Club actually inspired me. Mm. So I was like, prior to even starting my podcast in 2017, I was applying to work at the radio station mm-hmm. to see if I could intern, whatever. I just wanted to get in. I was like, I just saw that radio was turning into podcasting. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get in there. That didn't happen. <laughs> Ended up starting a podcast with some friends, two guys, one of which had like all of the equipment and the other, he was like, he was just real chill. He showed up, you know, and was just like, I'll bring the bottle. <laughs> and we used to have what we called like bar talk. Um, our pa- podcast was called The Cave Podcast because he, um, our producer or audio engineer had it in his basement. Mm. He had a whole bunch of like equipment, like GoPros on a ceiling and all types of cool stuff. Fancy. Yes. So it was like, that was my first like run into podcasting and they didn't want to do any of the promotion. They didn't want to do any of the editing. So I stepped up and started doing it. Hated it at first. I was like, Mm. no, this is too much. This is taking too long. I don't want to do it. My boyfriend at the time, my husband was like, nah, you're going to stick with this. Like, I can tell you really like it. Like, you just got to get through it. It was crazy. Like, our first famous guest was Chingy. I was able to book oh. Chingy at the time. So it was just how, really did that, cool. how did that happen? I, I don't know. I guess I'm really, I'm realizing I'm really good with research. Mm-hmm. Like, just did looking for his publicist, looking for his team, like manager. Um, found his information online. Emailed back and forth. And it's like, hey, we'd love for you guys to be on our show. And then they, they booked the time. He called in and he was on our podcast. Wow. I know people watching this, if they're thinking about starting a podcast, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is like, oh, I can't get a big name guest mm-hmm. because I don't have an audience. So, like, what was the selling point? Or what do you think the selling point was? Honestly, like, when I look back at those emails, I have no idea. I think I was just <laughs> determined, very professional. So I think it just came off like, okay, she she knows what she's doing. We were on an internet radio station. That might have been a little bit of like a, okay, this is an internet radio station. Even though our internet radio station was not that big, I didn't come in with like any numbers or anything like that. I was mm-hmm. just like, this is what we talk about. We want to celebrate you. We love your music. What's up, basically? Yes. Okay. So you just got to make the ask. Mm-hmm. People are afraid to ask. Yeah, but... I would rather ask and get told no than not ask and not know Never. if that was a possibility. Mm-hmm. Cool. For sure. The yams was slamming. You could have some more. I'm gonna dig in a second. The potatoes are okay. They're not potatoing. I almost feel like I should have had some uh, gravy. Yeah, it do look like it needs some gravy. Yeah, a little help. Yeah, that's probably the best. <laughs> so, um, can we talk about you and your no. big name clients or no? Not the new one. I just told you. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. All right, cool. NDA. So it won't, it won't be until a little bit later. I'm going to talk about that. Can we talk about social proof? Yes. Okay. Yes. So for those of you who don't know, Naya works with some of the big, big name podcasts in our market, right? Mm-hmm. One of them is social proof with David Shands and Donnie Wiggins. So like, how did that come about? Like what, where did you even, yeah. Tell us how you started with that. Yes. It's crazy. Like how that, I'm still in awe. Again, it's all about the ask. It's all about like paying attention to what they're doing. Honestly, when you're trying to get a guest on a podcast, it's the same thing. Like they want to know that you're interested in them and what's mm-hmm. going, what they have going on. So I remember I was pregnant with my firstborn, and I was sitting on the couch. This sounds like one of those commercials. <laughs> <laughs> sitting on the couch, you watching? <laughs> okay. okay, passing you by. Right. So I did an ad like that. I'll tell you about it later. I did an ad. Like that, um, we never released it. But no, released it. oh, you have to show me. <laughs> this, that has to be a blooper. Like we have to put that in. Here. You're sitting at home, scrolling through social media, watching live pass you by. Maybe I'll start a business tomorrow. Maybe I'll start one next year. No, do it right now. Me and my team are literally waiting to help you launch your business this year. All you have to do is click the link and book a call. Why are you making it complicated? It's easy. I was sitting on my couch. I was watching like dif- different YouTube channel or YouTube accounts, just like videos. And I came across David's podcast in his beginning stages, right? So this is like 
2019. Yeah, 2019. So before I even had my son. And so I was like, okay. And I remember watching an episode and he was like, yo, if you ever want to work with somebody, the best way to do that is to buy in to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I kind of held on to that. Fast forward to last year, I knew that David had the morning meetup. And the morning meetup is like when a whole bunch of entrepreneurs, they meet up every day of the week, Monday through Friday, to discuss everything about like entrepreneurship. They have like a book club and different days. He has like different um, guests come and speak. Mm -hmm. And it's all on Zoom. And I was like, okay, well, in the back of my head, a friend of mine told me like, go ahead and join. And I'm like, know like is it gonna really bring me leads like what I don't know if I really wanted to join this mm -hmm. so at the time I had Michael Red former NBA all-star player for the Bucks as a client I was managing and producing his podcast Come on, big name yes that was like to me like my first like I was really excited about that I was looking I, I got to choose his guests and book his guests so it's the entrepreneurship podcast that Michael Red has and so I was like hmm I wonder if David would be interested in being on his show. He's an entrepreneur. I'm sure he can share a lot of things with Michael Red's audience. So I was like, all right, well, in order to do this, if I really want him on the show, I likely would have to pay to get into the morning meetup so I can get into his circle. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Smart girl. Strategy. <laughs> that was before it. I was working with her. Yes, but still, <laughs> like, did that, showed up. He's, he um, records live every Wednesday, so pulled up on Wednesday. And actually, prior to that, I had sent him an email and he already agreed. So I wanted to show up in person and just be like, the team behind the, the email, <laughs> like mm -hmm. introduce myself, wanted to see if Michael could go on his podcast. So that was that was where my head was at. So it was funny because when I showed up, Dave was looking at me like, like who are you? Like, very much so. <laughs> I stunk, I was like, oh. I was like, Michael Red, like you're supposed to be doing his um, podcast soon. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you agreed, you sent me an email and you agreed to this to this podcast. Like now I gotta go back and tell <laughs> Michael, like you're not gonna be on this. So he's like, what are you talking about? So he's like, pull up the email. So I'm like, oh, he really like, <laughs> okay, no he problem. really acting brand new. Come on receipts. <laughs> so I pull it up and he's like, oh yeah, Michael Red, yeah. oh that's you? And he looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I'm not a flashy person. I am new in the entrepreneurship world. So I'm sure he was probably thinking a more like buttoned up mm -hmm. person, maybe got a rolly, something like something on David's level essentially. <laughs> um, but then I kept showing up, kept showing up on Wednesdays, showing my face. He did the interview. Then I <laughs> very ballsy of me. Like within the first month, I was like, okay see if I can work with David like I really think that he could at the time I was I was telling him that he needed a network this is before mm. he even launched his network this year or a little bit last year talking about network for the podcast mm. or the membership okay podcast network so I'm like you need a podcast network and you know like we should go 50 50 like I was buried when I tell you guys I was bossy didn't even think my about, girl. <laughs> didn't think about <laughs> nothing I was just like give me so my what? percentage <laughs> he was like okay put together a presentation so I go home, I'm geeked, I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what to put in this presentation. <laughs> so I'm like calling everybody I know on radio, like what should I put in here to make sure that it flows and it makes sense? And everybody was like, I don't know, podcasting is not like their realm in radio. It's such a new industry. Like it's been around for a while, but it, it's such a new industry. So everybody was like, hey, help you not. <laughs> but I was so nervous, so I put it together. Dave was impressed, he was like, okay, Cool. And then I, you know, I, I did the 50-50 thing. He was like, but nobody knows you. And I was like, oh, that, that hit home. Like, I was like, oh, so you like the idea. Everything I presented was cool. He was like, nobody knows you. So if you know David, he has the Social Proof podcast, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all about social proof for him. Like, how are you showing up online? Are you are you really doing what you, what you say you're doing? I just kept at it, kept showing up. Then Dave was like, all right, well, let me see if you can do sales for me. And then it turned from sales to let me see if you can do, like, manage my Patreon. And so that's mm. where I'm at now, managing his Patreon. The journey. Mm -hmm. You're so right. Like, if somebody, if you want to work with somebody in any realm, buy into their stuff. Like, even if it's, like, a low-ticket item, mm -hmm. show them that you support, get on their email list, and invest into them, and hopefully that will return mm -hmm. on, you know, in them investing into you. For sure. Has that happened to you, like, any of your um, contractors and employees? they start off like in your community and then you move them yeah so my graphic designer smart talk is good 
Let me go ahead. 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 What you mean? <laughs> did it look dry? It did, but it's, it's moist. Anyway, my graphic designer, Smart Talk, he started out in my community. Actually, I started in his community. Really? Because when I yeah, when I was first launching my course, I went on a Facebook group tour mm -hmm. to do my webinar the first time before I put it. Yeah. It, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I would approach group owners, mm -hmm. Facebook group owners, and then I would ask them. I say, Hey, I want to you know do a training to your community. Yeah. It's always about the strategy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I want to do a training for your community, add value to your community. And then, of course, you know, we had, like, anybody who enrolled mm -hmm. after I did the training, you know, you get a percentage. That's key. Partnerships is amazing. Mm -hmm. That will help you, especially if you don't have money to invest in ads. Look, so You looked at me because that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Nine the years on the way up. Girl, um, that is good. Some sauce, but I like mm -hmm. the flavor. It definitely has flavor. So I joined his community. I did um, a training for his community. Mm -hmm. Got some uh, leads. Paid him out. He was like, I actually want to be a part of your <laughs> of your program. So he joined my program. Smart Talk is in uh, Nigeria, okay. and he wanted to break into the U.S. market. So we helped him break into the U.S. market. Helped him get some clients. And I was like, well, actually, I need your services. So wow. it just kind of went like back and forth. But I always respect the fact that, you know, again, you invest, people invest in you, you know? So see, don't be afraid to invest. That's the thing, you know what's crazy? And I feel like I had a little bit of this mentality a few years ago, like mm -hmm. that, that abundance mentality. You went in there with an abundance mentality. Yes. Like, and the fact that he agreed shows that he had some type of abundance mentality. Like, right. okay, this other person is going to tap into my community. He could have been afraid, like, oh, he's going to take all my community or whatever the case may be. It's not the case. Like, like right. you said, collaboration is everything. And you can't build on an island. That's something right. that somebody told me. You cannot build Can't. on an island. So I love that. And I didn't yeah. even know that. And the thing is, is, like, when I was first thinking of it, when I first did, like, the whole partnership thing friend like my friends was like why are you giving away a percentage of like your revenue and you ain't even made anything yet and da, da, da. what you got to understand is you are either going to pay on the front end or the back end mm -hmm. so you may as well if somebody is I, you need exposure to get your business out there and the key to sales i tell you this all the time mm -hmm. the key to sales is getting in front of enough people mm -hmm. everybody's mm -hmm. not going to buy your product people are going to tell you no but it's about getting to that yes. Somebody will tell you yes. So how many people do I need to get in front of until I get enough yeses to make my goal, right? You know, that's another reason why you should join CEO Nation, my membership, where it's a community and network of entrepreneurs who are all looking to go to the next level. Because if I would listen to my friends, nobody would have let me leverage their community. Or they would have had me pay on the front end and I didn't have the money at the time. Right, and then you're stuck, right? Right. But if I'm like, listen, I got this dope content. Mm -hmm. I know it converts. Mm -hmm. Let me come in. Whatever money I make, you get a percentage of it. People are like, okay. But what, what you just said, too, and I don't want it to go over people's heads, is like, you essentially tell me all the time, leveraging other people's audiences mm -hmm. is what helps. And you don't have to pay necessarily all the time, right, to do that. OPA, other people's audiences. Leverage. BTM is doing everything. Yeah. Too. Me Peach Cobble Cafe, you did your thing mm -hmm. on this one. Mm -hmm. Naya, so you, oh yeah, Naya has expanded her business. Now she's like this saleswoman for, <laughs> for podcast <laughs> services, yes. which is great. Sometimes your business evolves as your customers' needs evolve, yes. you know? And when you're first starting, you don't really know. You think you know what your customers want, but you don't really know until like, until when. Until you get your feet wet, like until you jump into it, and even mm -hmm. then, like it's constantly changing. I think until they keep asking for the mm -hmm. for the thing, right? So, yes. and I kept getting asked about sponsorships. Oh, well, if you can help me get sponsorships, if you can help me get paid for my podcast, oh, we we rock it. Like, nah, you you not gonna ever not have a client. And I was like, but I don't want to do sales. And like, but you're good with talking mm -hmm. to people. I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if somebody want thank you if somebody wants to start a podcast mm-hmm. and they want to monetize that Which podcast one? a little bit more okay. yes. <laughs> yes coach yes <laughs> if somebody wants to start a podcast and they want to monetize it mm-hmm. sponsorships all this other stuff can you give them a little secret sauce just yeah. a little bit so most people look at the the conventional ways of getting sponsorships right like you don't even have to have started your podcast to get sponsorships for your podcast Mm. there are so many different ways to monetize one of those ways is if your podcast like i would say if you're a business owner and you're starting a podcast and it aligns with a specific product or a service or brand that you know that fits into what you offer you can essentially go to that person and partner right and say look for the first series of my podcast I'd like you to be the title sponsor. So you essentially ask them for a certain amount, maybe it's production, like your like your production cost. That's what you want to cover because most podcasters they'll stop because production can production be expensive. Yeah. Essentially you would go to those brands, ask them if they want to be a title sponsor. On their end, they get content. So many businesses <clears throat> and brands aren't just looking at the CPM model. And I know like a lot of people look at that, like with the podcast world, CPM is cost per milli. Mm-hmm. And usually you'll have a cost per a thousand downloads for your podcast. And you don't mm. need you don't need that in order to get a sponsorship. So I say all that to say you can essentially sell your content itself versus the slots in it to um, get sponsorships. If that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yes. For having mimosas. We didn't have the glasses because no. we're not in my house, but you know. Enough. Thank you. But to your point, like a lot of that stuff I learned on the go though, too. Mm-hmm. Like I think podcasters, content creators in general, they're afraid to like just get their feet wet. Just create. Like if you're living, you're creating. You are a creator. Create and ask. Mm-hmm. Just ask. Mm-hmm. I'm um, a part of a small nonprofit. One of the things that I've been adamant about is sponsorship. I'm like, we have, we may not be the biggest organization, but we have some members. There are people who want to get in front of our members. Right. And they'll pay to get in front of the members. Yep. Because it can be small businesses. It doesn't have to be the huge conglomerates. Mm -hmm. Like, it could be Mm -hmm. like your coaches. The coaches, the coaching space? We spend money. To get get our name out there, we spend money. No, I will never forget. The reason why I like, I even learned about the coaching space was because during the pandemic, the clubhouse, all the coaches were on clubhouse. I feel like all these mm-hmm. rooms had coaches in it. And I met this guy. Everybody was trying to be a coach. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, dang. I mean, some of them aren't here anymore. Yeah. But my background before I was in podcasting was social media. But it's so saturated. Like, everybody's a social media manager. Mm-hmm. People, a lot of, I feel like businesses, small businesses especially, they don't really respect social media management they get their niece and nephew and they be like well my niece can do my social media yeah they do so i was like okay how do i pivot like what what am i doing and he was like you need to focus on solo for solo for newers like myself and then i'm mm. like it took a minute i'm like oh like coaches and then i took a deep dive into instagram and it's like oh there's a lot of coaches out here <laughs> Like, that want to get their name out there, that are mm-hmm. interested in podcasting, interested in creating content on a consistent basis. Building their authority. Yes. This is a gold mine. I think when people give you advice, mm-hmm. even when coach gives me advice, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> really? Really? I got to do that? Like, I got to do all that? <laughs> but then when I actually do it, I'm like, oh, dang, I should have oh. listened to coach when he said <laughs> I should have listened to coach when he said that. Especially <laughs> leveraging other people's audiences, like mm-hmm. that has been like the biggest game changer for me. And you were just like, hey, just just do it. And I'm like, All right. well, I gotta do that. Get in front of these people. Get That's in front the of advice. these people and balance. Mm-hmm. Oh. Which we talked about. That I'm working on. Yeah. yeah. I'm working on that. So every Monday night I do a coaching call, a group coaching call, in my From Passion to Profit launch experience. Listen, starting a business can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. There's three things every entrepreneur needs to know when they're getting ready to start their business. Number one, that there's a difference between starting a business and launching a business. You don't want to just start a business. You need to put a strategic plan in place so that you can actually accomplish the results that you're looking for. Number two, where are you going to get your first customers? And not just any customers, but customers who will pay you a premium. And then number three, where to get funding for your business. 
if you're looking to grow the business, you need something to start it with. So if you are a new or aspiring entrepreneur or you're looking to launch a new product or service, I want to invite you to my free training where I'm teaching you how to launch your business in the next 90 days or less using the resources you have, okay? Because it gets real out here. So if you want to attend that training, make sure you click the link in the description below and I will see you in the training. Now back to the episode. But every Monday night, we do a coaching call. And then also on the on Wednesdays or Thursdays, we do an accountability call. So accountability call is when you just check in. We're holding you accountable to your goals. We are helping you set goals and help you finish the week strong. And the resonating message across what everybody kind of needed accountability for was rest. At first it was balance, but I don't really, I think balance is a fallacy in entrepreneurship. You'll never achieve balance, but you can achieve rest, right? And you can take some time off. A lot of these coaches say, grind, yeah, grind till you die, no sleep, like, you know, 24 seven, like hustle hard, you should be working every day. It is easier to prevent burnout than it is to burn out and try to come back. Because your body will tell you real quick. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some times where, some seasons where you need to hustle and you need to grind, right? I'm in that season now. Like, me and the team, we are grinding. But there's also going to come a season where I'm going to take a two-week vacation. Yes. <laughs> in about What'd a month. Did you say, Bali? Uh-huh. Did you tell me Bali? Uh, Aruba. But I think we're going to go somewhere. We're either going to go to Aruba, the Dominican Republic, or one of the islands. Okay. Mm-hmm. Somebody told me it wasn't that much. They was like, you're going two weeks to Aruba, ain't nothing to do. No. So, what did you take away? Because Naya is a little Nick, and she works from sunup to sundown. <laughs> plus, she has children and a husband. Yes. Um, and, you know, I think we had got very real that on was, that accountability call. Look, Dr. Sue, you made me so uncomfortable. In a good <laughs> way. Like, she mm-hmm. was reading I was like, was. you had me open up my calendar, <clears throat> and I was like, honestly, half the stuff that I have to do is not even on the calendar yet. Mm-hmm. Like, I have I a had whole list. <laughs> and he was and like, I've been telling her put everything on the calendar. Yes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still working on that. So I'm like, sorry. yes, <laughs> baby steps, <laughs> real baby steps. But it's crazy because like you were telling me you were like, okay, put an hour break every day. And I'm like, every day, like <laughs> every day you like, okay. 30 minutes. And I'm like, 30 minutes? Like, <laughs> you like, damn, like. 30 minutes on the calendar, <laughs> Naya. And I was struggling <laughs> even on that call to put it on there. You were like, mm-hmm. no, like, do it now. Like, show your, do it now. And I'm like. <laughs> she got more. She's like, oh, actually, this is a little bit longer. Yeah. Oh, maybe I need to do. So she started putting more work on the calendar okay. instead of doing what I told her to yeah. do. But, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but Dr. Sue, at the time, though, it was funny because she was she was like, Naya, I just want to let you know you sound like me. And I spent all this and she broke down like her health and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. And I was just like, oh. And my, my body has been telling me like slow down for a while. <clears throat> but I've been ignoring it because I'm like, well, I got, I got stuff I got to accomplish. Like I got mm-hmm. things to do. And she was like, none of that stuff matters. Like yeah, the work is always going to be there. It's never going to stop. Like mm-hmm. work will be there. When she said that, I was like, okay. And then everybody started coming out, even coach. I was like, oh, you were <laughs> like, you know what? I need to take this advice. I was like, coach. Yeah. He was like, look, because you said you actually put like an hour time on your schedule mm-hmm. every day. Do you, you said sometimes and you I honor did, it, sometimes. Sometimes I honor it, sometimes I dishonor it. Yeah. But I have to recommit to honoring it. Because the reason I started that was because I had got burnt out. Yeah. To the point where I got stuck. So, like, I was telling him about how all day, uh, not yesterday, on on Thursday of the call, I was working on little things. I would stop and then work on something else and then never got anything accomplished. And I'm usually good about, let me do a to-do list and I got a goal, right? Like, I may not get everything on the to-do list, but here are my top three things I need to get done today. And um, that day, I just never got anything done. I just got stuck. It was not productive. And I think think taking that hour break would have made a difference. When you said that, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, it's just, because sometimes I just I just say it's scatterbrain. Like, now mm-hmm. it's just you being scatterbrain. Like, you be like, what am I it. doing? <laughs> what am I supposed what, to be doing? What exactly? <laughs> and Jeff, he be looking at me. 
Poor Jeff. If you look at Jeff, is my assistant, my new assistant. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because, like, sometimes I'll talk to him about one thing, and then I'll literally think of another five things that I have to do for the day. And he'll be like, so now we've been talking about... <laughs> Like this, you know? So when you said that, you were like, yeah, I was starting and stopping things and doing, that is me all day. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard to like, it's really, really hard to determine like, am I being productive? Am I really getting stuff done? Mm-hmm. Am, the what What's crazy is, am I getting stuff done in the time it needs to be done? Like the priority, prioritizing things, mm-hmm. that's, that's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot for me. Yeah. Like trying to figure out if I should do the small task first or the larger task. I always say um, when you're prioritizing, the first thing to do is to know know thyself, right? For me, I am most productive. We are. Let me open the door. His office is very plush. Okay. <laughs> very plush. I don't know. I just feel like, and I also wonder, because Coach Nick does a lot. Like he he ain't really saying <laughs> what he Coach Dick does a lot. Like I don't know how you I don't know how you do it. Like for real, for real. You gotta stru- <laughs> you gotta structure your week. You have to structure your week. You have to commit to operating out of the calendar, and you also have to commit to yourself to honor the times where you turn it off. You have to turn entrepreneurship off. You got if to. You're, if you're passionate about it, how do you turn off this like? brain that's going to constantly have do, ideas. Do the things that people say you shouldn't do. So like for the first year when I started my coaching business, mm-hmm. um, I used to love playing like video games and watching TV and stuff. Are you a gamer? I really, am I get, am mm-hmm. I a gamer? Only that's specific good. ones like, <laughs> only <laughs> specific ones like Tomb Raider, Last of Us, stuff like that, stealthy mm-hmm. games like that. But um, I had to get focused. So I had to fast from that stuff, right? Like had to put that stuff to the side. But now that I've gotten my business, it's up and running. We got a little team. When I need to turn off and not think about it, just find something else to find a different pastime. Whether it's reading a book, whether it's just watching TV or, you know, playing your game. Like I'd like to play the game, but also, you know, moderation, right? <clears throat> Because we can go down the rabbit hole mm-hmm. of, and then become super unproductive. But honor that that hour that you set aside each day. Find something else. What the girls say, find somebody else to do it. <laughs> find somebody else to do it in the business. For sure. Operating out of a calendar. What do you say about people like, I've heard coaches say, they operate out of a calendar. Mm-hmm. But like, if you try to send them their cal- like a calendar link, they be offended. Like they're like, oh no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the same thing can be given to me. Like, what do you mean? You got time. Right. That, that's a little bit of entitlement. Um, but you have to operate out of a calendar. I love sending people my calendar, my calendar link. But You had to beg now. me to get that. <laughs> I was, you remember? Yeah. But the thing is, is because it, it sets you up for mm-hmm. success. So, like, I'm not in back-to-back meetings every day unless I go in and mess with some stuff. Right, but if I send you a calendar, it automatically. So, like, I use Calendly. We'll put a link in the description for you to use Calendly. Um, but you can set buffers up. So, like, I need. I have it set to where I have 30 minutes in between each meeting. Mm-hmm. Right. If I'm traveling somewhere and it's a physical meeting, then it's an hour. So it gives okay. me time to travel, get my stuff, get myself together, and then jump Ooh. back in. Right. And so it's easier to do it that way because then you don't have to worry about it. Now, when I'm in weeks where I'm in back-to-back meetings, it's because I didn't honor my process, and I went in and added folks, okay. right? Because I love my clients. Yes. I, I really, I really do that. build a connection and relationship. <laughs> well, no, you're good about using the um, okay. calculator. There's a couple. I'm not gonna name drop you. There's a couple <laughs> outs in. Like- who is not, who's just like, I just need, I need 30 minutes of your time, right? But when I do that, I dishonor myself. So I have to get back to commit or remind myself to commit to sending this link because you already know you'll, I'll be like, oh, I could just, I could finish this meeting early. Then I'll be pissed at the end of the day. Coach, the fact that I started using Calendly, people have been like running for me. They're like, are you too good now? You can't, you got to send me your calendar link? Like what? Yeah, I gotta send you my calendar link. We gotta like, get out of that mindset. Our people think it like is. that. Yeah. Because 
when I and this is you know again I love I love my black owned businesses, but um, the other culture. But that's what they. That's operate. that's how they operate. It's the same thing, and again, this is why I preach differently than mm-hmm. most of the other coaches. I'm not going. I'm not going to push you to. You need to work Monday through Sunday. Yeah. You right. know, like right. from 9 a.m. to 8:59 a.m. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not going to do that. Right. That's not what they're teaching over there. They're teaching. You need to be structured. The ideal work week. I got mm-hmm. that from them. Mm-hmm. I joined the coaching program on productivity, mm-hmm. and that's what I they did. were teaching. Mm-hmm. And that's what they were teaching. And it changed my mindset because I'm like, I was always taught grind, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. But you know what? I don't know if this is getting too deep. <laughs> Let me <laughs> reel me back in. <laughs> but when I think about like that grind, grind, grind mentality, it goes all the way back to. It does. Yep. Slavery. Yeah. It like does. we built this country. It's like slave mentality. They own it. We build it. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like that working mentality. Like I have to work. I remember I met. I had a mentor some years back. Oh my God. At this ad agency, and he was like, "Yeah, your people, y'all think you gotta work twice as hard in order to make things meet. You mm-hmm, don't have to work mm-hmm. twice as hard." And I'm like, "That's easy for you to say. You you don't look like me." Right, mm-hmm. like, you know, it was crazy at the time. I was a receptionist at the ad agency, and I was trying to have a master's degree. I'm like, I, I can, I can help you guys with marketing, social media stuff. I had a job prior to. They wouldn't take me off the desk, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'll work my way up. Like, mm-hmm. give me some projects. So they started giving me projects, but paying me as a receptionist. <laughs> so what? I was doing projects for the company for. The company, yeah, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna out y'all. <laughs> I was doing projects for the company, but they would not put me like on a team. So I was getting paid like twelve dollars an hour. Did they tell you the reason? Because the what, reason, <clears throat> right, 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 right. <laughs> so what I end up hearing was that um, they couldn't take themselves out of seeing me on on the desk. They're like, well, it would j- it wouldn't be fair. I have a whole master's degree. Like, mean? what do you? Yeah, like, what are you right. talking about? They were making excuses essentially Mm because they wanted me to continue to do work for pennies on the dollar (laughs) right Mm -mm. Um, for somebody else to do it exactly (laughs) so i was just like okay this is ridiculous so i remember telling them like i put my two weeks in they were like no you're so great like we'll give you a a raise two dollars yeah what (laughs) i'm about to have a baby i don't have time for this and they didn't know that because at the time the lady was trying to supposedly bring me up like get me up the ranks and she was like well so like, you know, if you're pregnant, I can't help you. So it was like a whole bunch of stuff. So they looking at the, the the black girl, right? Like, oh, not only do you you're working at, as the receptionist, you're trying to get over on, you know, technically where I felt like I belong. But now that you're pregnant too, you you a black girl and you pregnant? Mm. No, we're not gonna give you give you that opportunity. So I said all that. Say my my mentor, <clears throat> he told me he was like, look. You have to think smarter, not harder. Like, don't yes. work twice as hard. Figure out a way to get out. So I was like, and I we quit. Say, and we say it, but we don't truly mean no. like they mean it. Mm-hmm. And got the strategy behind it. <laughs> he was a strategist, and he said that how he got up the ranks and got paid more was because he used to start doing white papers and research. So they knew that he had really great research skills, and that's the reason why he was able to get where he was at. That man used to come in once a week. Like, he, he would go and grab me. He'd be like, nah, you want to go to lunch? I'll take you to lunch. Like, he really didn't work. Everybody used to say that he didn't work. <laughs> and he would tell me. He was like, I don't work. I just get paid to be here. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it's really like, but he's like, I'm valuable because on this specific um, project, I know what I know. And they can't replace yep. me. This specific skill set. But we, we think we got to work 10 times harder. We do. And you don't. Another thing that I've learned um, from working with my counterparts mm-hmm. is the art of delegation. <clears throat> oh, I learned that under you as well. Mm-hmm. And so, and here's the thing, right? When I learn something, I teach my. That's what a good coach does: is teach their clients the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like bring it on back. And this is why when I was first starting out, when I made my investments, because every coach, I mean. Not even just every coach. If you want to grow, not even just as an entrepreneur, just as a person, as a leader, you need to invest in personal and professional development. I went to college. 
invest in people who have like who can help you get results right right i think the investments that i've made it made in coaching courses and mentorship um is definitely for me my opinion is more valuable than my college degree than the investment i made in the college i'm still trying to pay back (laughs) i'm with you on that but the art of delegation we struggle with that especially first coming into entrepreneurship oh i don't you know i don't have the money to well listen pay a va overseas Mm -hmm. you know even if you can't start with like a premium person like a team that's dedicated to just you pay a minimum just at least delegate some of the stuff so you can start building the habit of delegating things in your business it's the first thing i tell people when i work with them like you need to invest in the she to invest in a uh, VA. You kept assistant. telling me that. You was like, you look stressed. <laughs> you need to hire. Like mm-hmm. you would tell me that over, and I'm like, but how? Like with what money? Yeah. And you were like, you gotta figure it out. That was one thing. Like that's mm-hmm. the. I remember. I will never forget. I was talking to you about. <clears throat> I think delegation. Mm-hmm. And you, I had told you. I was like, I just want you to tell me what to do. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. I was like, I just want you to like tell me. Our first month of coaching calls. Yes. I was like, no, I just want you to tell me. Like, you're like, that's not my job. I'm not supposed to tell you what to do. I'm supposed to guide you. Right? And I was like, I need him to tell me. Like, and I think that that entrepreneurs, especially when you're starting off or like you're, you may have some footing, right? You may have a big head like myself at the time and was like, I'm been doing this for a little while there is a level of one like like you said knowing yourself but also like taking advice even if you feel like you know it all <laughs> yep coach was like coaches you've been like very like all right i'm a puller uh, she don't want to be all right i'm gonna I'm leave it there you go over here <laughs> oh you need me again i thought you <laughs> <laughs> you know i should have did <laughs> you know what then i'm like okay let me let me let me listen. And sometimes like you you just it's not I have every intention on listening, mm-hmm. right? But you just don't know what you know until you just do it. Like mm-hmm. just take the advice. It's not gonna hurt. And not only that, the my style of coaching, like I mentioned to you and all my other clients, I'm not going to tell you what to do in your business. Mm-hmm. I wanted to help you develop as a CEO right. and build the confidence that we're gonna make a decision in this business. And we're going to go with it. And if it doesn't work out, we learn the lesson. But if it does work out, we make the money, right? right? Or right. We, we accomplish the result. And there's there's a beauty in that journey when you're growing because entrepreneurship to me is more than just business. Yes. It's more than just business. Um, but we have an okay. Yeah, we got extra. Yes. Entrepreneurship is more than just business. Um, it's personal development. It's professional development. It's therapy. It is. Um, it teaches you. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. It it helps you develop social skills. Like it's just so multifaceted, you know. And as a coach, can I give you the blueprint? Yes. And for some things, I do. Like, okay, we for need sure. to put a launch plan together. Here, sure. here's the here's the blueprint to do that. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to making decisions, when it comes to you, I see that there's an opportunity for you to grow, whether you make the right decision or the wrong decision. I'm always going to give you some advice, but I'm going to support you in this is your business. You're the CEO. Make the decision. Oh, when he said that, I was like, <laughs> I don't want to make the decision. I don't, you remember <laughs> I don't want it. What do you mean? And you're like, no, this is to help you grow. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then I was muddled a little bit like. It, this is a great conversation because you, yeah. you're absolutely right. Our mentality shapes our paradigm. And what I was, oh, what I was saying earlier was when I made my first investments in like coaching and mentorship, um, I I intentionally, yeah, I patronized our people, mm-hmm. but I also was like, let me go figure out what they, Uh-oh. let me go figure out what they're doing differently. Look, because <laughs> I don't think I, I don't do that enough. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I don't do it enough. And I look at it almost, I don't know what it is. It's like, I don't know if it's a fear thing of like being judged, mm-hmm. especially being a brown face in a majority white community. It's like, or industry, you're like, okay, if I talk this way, are they gonna look at me like I'm less than? I would never forget. I don't give a damn. You like, I'm, I'm coming in. This. 
and asking the questions. I, I went to a, a PWI for grad school, <clears throat> and I will never forget, in this statistic class, I said, am I tripping? Like, I was showing them my statistics, like my, my data sheet or whatever, and I was like, am I tripping? And then the teacher and the student next to me was like, tripping? I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Tripping? Tri- tripping? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, am I tri- y'all don't know what tripping me? That, that to me was like a tell sign. Like, okay, do I fit in here? And I think that messes with me when I think about, like you said, to me it's smart though. You mm-hmm. want to go on the other side, right? And see what they're doing. Check out their webinars. Mm-hmm. Check out the, the type of content that they're creating. Because the algorithm leans towards them anyway. But I think it's a mental block. It is. When I first started my event business, I enrolled in a $2,000 course Mm -hmm. with um, a white lady who, she was an event planner and she, I attended her webinar. I didn't even know it was a, this was like back in 2014, 15. So it was before like, you really knew, like now when you're in a webinar, Webinar. you know you're in a webinar. Except for my webinar, I really dropped some content. But uh, in Naya's webinar, she dropped some content too. But um, I was in her webinar. She was talking about how she worked with, like, these big Fortune 500 companies, which mm. I'm now able to say that I've worked with big Fortune yes. 500 companies. When I got in there, instead Coca-Cola. of right, instead of me listening to this lady uh, first starting off, mm-hmm. I was like, how, do I, how can I work with, like, Coca-Cola and yeah. these other companies? So, like, oh, go do it for free. I'm like, for free? Yeah, not with all these people. Not with all these people t- right. telling me that I need to raise my prices. Right, right. Just like raise your prices. You haven't even made a sale yet. Go do it for free. So instead of listening to her, I went. I went to and and she said go offer Coca Cola to do it for free yeah, or whatever the something. big company yeah. that I that I named. It wasn't Coca Cola at the time, but whatever the big company that I named. She was like go offer to do something for free. So I didn't do that. So I'm spinning my wheels. I'm still trying yeah. to. I'm like this event business is not taking off. I'm just the second coaching call. Mm-hmm. Go do it for free. I'm like, okay. It didn't click until I moved from Miami to Atlanta. That concept of go do it for what she called free. Now I say go do it for an exchange of, of value. Right? Yeah. So like, I'm going to give you these services and I'm not going to charge you monetary mm-hmm value but I want a review I want a referral I need a meeting I need an introduction like it needs to have something that's in what's in it for me right right? right. and I'll give you what's in it for you so I did um I went to a fraternity event Mm -hmm. or a fraternity meeting and I stood up I said hey you know I'm new to the Atlanta area I'm a part of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated I'm new to the area I have an event business I'm looking to help three people with their event free of charge. Now, what did that do for me? Mm. I had everybody come to me. I didn't give everybody free even. I, I right. looked. I was like, what's the opportunity in this? Right. And my frat brother, Thomas, brother Thomas Walters, said, hey, I'm a part of the Lupus Foundation. You know, we would like to do a holiday event. Mm. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Lupus that's Foundation, like, that's huge. That's legit, yes. So I offered to plan their holiday party mm. for free. For free. All I need in exchange mm-hmm. is an introduction to the board chair. An you introduction said that? to how did you know? Yeah. How did you know there was a board chair? You know what I'm saying? Well, because it was a nonprofit. Okay. And I'm and again you gotta study your study your ideal client and your target market, right? So I was like, I can go in one of three areas. I can go social, which that's like weddings and family reunions and stuff. Gotcha. It's hard to find those okay those clients who have the budget and money that I really wanted to make. I was like, I need to make some money. So then the only other option was corporate events and meeting planning and nonprofit because they have the budget for it. So I did my study. I'm like, okay, who's the movers and the shakers? Who makes decisions? Who hires contractors? Who who brings people on? So I was like, I need an introduction to the board chair. I need an introduction to um, whoever, the president or the executive director or whoever, right? So when when I did that event, not only did I get, you want some more of this? Not only did I, um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's hidden. Yes, 
Did you want any more? Mm -mm. You like this man? Mm -hmm. Not only did I get a chance to meet those people, mm -hmm. but they also contracted me to plan the event the next year. And their their two biggest events, so their walk and their gay walk. And then the board chair, who was a lawyer, contracted me to plan events for his law firm. And then their other local chapters was mm -hmm. like, oh, can you come plan our event? Can you do this? And can you, you know, hey, I got a, a birthday party coming up. Can you plan a birthday party? And then it like trickled down. Wow. And I'm like, I should have listened to that white lady <laughs> sooner. Because it works. Right. Yes. It works. Yes. And now I teach that same strategy mm -hmm. to you guys and my clients when they're launching their business. Because you just got to get the foot in the door. But the, the difference that I teach, I mean, I guess she taught it too. She just didn't like say it. The difference that I teach is that you know, get get something in exchange for it. Get a review. And that's get a probably referral. what she meant, but it was you know what I'm saying? I feel like <clears throat> again, our people talk to us a certain way and yeah. we understand it, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. Like it's like, oh, okay, like that's what you mean by that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go do it because I understand what you're saying. Sometimes I feel like when we work with people on the other side, our friends on the other side, they, they speak differently, right? Mm -hmm. There's a whole different lingo that they go by and Sometimes I think that's hard to translate. So the fact yeah. that you were like, it's still stuck like in your mind. If she would have said, look, do it for free, but look for the value. I'm mm -hmm. sure you would have been like, oh, okay, what's in it for me? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But all you heard was, why, I gotta, why, why are you telling the black guy to do it for free? Or, that, <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what came to my mind. And sometimes, sometimes that is what it is. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes yeah. Karen's, you know, pop up and stuff. But we have to get out of thinking that way. Get the strategy. What you're doing is working. What are you doing that is working? Right. You know, right. and get the strategy. Mm -hmm. This was a nice convo. I know. It was good. It, it was. was good. Naya, where can the people find you? Yes. Um, so you can find me on my personal Instagram at Naya Bianca. And then my business page is at Naya B Marketing. And that's N as in Nancy, Y-A, B, Marketing. Anything else before we head off? Yes. If you're interested in starting a podcast, listen up. You definitely want to sign up for the VP Club. The VP Club is your virtual podcast membership club that teaches you how to be accountable in the podcast space. But we're also dropping gems on a consistent basis about production, how to produce your podcast without spending a whole bunch of money on equipment, as well as um, how to promote your podcast on social media. I'm going to pull a David. Can we get a link? Yes. <laughs> I got you, coach. <laughs> got cool. you. Yes. Cool. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you click like and subscribe because we drop content like this every week. Yes. And listen, um, at the end of the day, get out there and make stuff happen. Your dreams are just a, it's just an idea, a concept, a strategy away. Get out and make stuff happen. Peace, y'all. Yes. Did you like that episode? Not only do I want you to click like and subscribe, but I want you to binge watch the next episode right here.